Welcome to Joey's Dynamic Programming Tutorial. This is Joey. Lately, I have been focusing on some hot dynamic programming problems from Lead Code. And in this video, I will continue the trend by focusing on another Lead Code problem that goes by the title is Subsequence. Without any delay, let's check out its problem statement. The problem statement is quite simple. You are given two strings, string 1 and string 2. And you need to find out if a string 1 is a subsequence of string 2. So string 1 is ABC and string 2 is AHBGDC. You can see that ABC does exist as a subsequence in AHBGDC. In this case, our dynamic programming algorithm should return true, which we will begin designing in a few moments. But before that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then do hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon because that impacts my ability to create videos like these in a direct manner. The plan is to find the length of the characters matching between string 1 and string 2 in the same order as they appear in string 1. If the length matches the length of string 1, that means the length of the matching characters matches the length of a string 1, then we can say that a string 1 is a subsequence of a string 2. Let's first do some brainstorming before we begin creating and learning the algorithm. I pick the first character from the smaller string and place it here. And then I put the first character of the bigger string and place it here. You can see that they both match. So I would say that this A is present in this A and the length of the matching characters between these two strings is 1, right? Now I add the second character from the bigger string over here. Is it going to make any difference? I mean the length of the matching characters will still be 1, right? Now consider that I pick the first character from the bigger string which is A and place it here and I pick the first two characters of the smaller string and place them here. Obviously in this case AB won't be a subsequence of A but we have got a match here. So I put down the length of characters matched again as 1. This is just a vice versa case. If we put H in this case the length of the matching string will be the same as the length of the matching string when the subproblem was the one selected. Now you see that both the cases give rise to the same subproblem. If you add B to this subproblem, you get this subproblem. If you add H to this subproblem, you get this subproblem. In order to solve this subproblem or in order to find the number of matching characters for this subproblem, when the last characters don't match, the length of the matching characters will be the maximum value of the length obtained from this subproblem and the length obtained from this subproblem. Why maximum value? For that, pay attention to this subproblem. We'll find out the length of the matching characters in the same style for this subproblem as well, which contains AHB from uh, string 2 and AB from string 1. Clearly the number of matching characters is 2 in this case. Now let's take a look at the second subproblem which contains AH from string 2 and ABC from string 1. Here the number of matching characters is only 1. You think now when I am interested in knowing how many characters match in order like AB and AB here, what would I choose between 1 and 2? 2 obviously, because it's the right answer. Thus, we choose the maximum. One more case after which we can begin solving the problem straight away is this one. We have AHB from a string 2 and AB from a string 1. In this case, we won't follow the same approach because if you observe the last characters of the two strings match. So they give one more match in addition to the length of the characters already matching, excluding them. 
so if i exclude them if i exclude the last characters then the remaining sub problem will be a h and a the matching characters length is 1 now we got another match in the form of p so the total length will become 1 plus 1 2 i believe we have worked a lot on the intuition part and i have told the scenarios to you in the bottom up fashion there are two strings in this problem hence i have created a table the bigger string represents its columns and the smaller string represents its rows i have added a zeroth column and a zeroth row to this matrix i have also filled up the zeroth row and the zeroth column with zeros the reason of which you will know in some time we'll start from the second cell of the second row in fact the index of this cell is 1 comma 1 so conceptually it happens to be the first cell of the matrix here we have a from string 1 and a from string 2 they match so the length of the matching string becomes 1 which i populate in this cell we move to the next cell in the row we have h here by common sense when string 1 is a and string 2 is a h then uh, what will be the matching length 1 only right similarly by common sense i populate 1 in each of these subsequent cells we move to the next row now the sub problem is a from string 2 and a b from string 1 we just discussed this case so i populate 1 in this cell moving on to the next cell hmm check here the sub problem shows up which we discussed moments ago so in this case we take the maximum value of the sub problem a and a h and a and a b since both are one hence the maximum value will be one which i populate over here moving to the next cell the sub problem becomes a b and a h b here b and b match so in this case what we do we add one to the value of the cell diagonally opposite to this cell because it holds the value of the sub problem a h and a we also discussed this sub problem hence we populate 2 in this cell moving on to the next sub problem let's see first if the last characters of the strings match so we have b over here and g over here clearly they don't match so in this case what we are going to do we are going to take the maximum of this value and this value what will be the maximum between 2 and 1 it will be 2 so i am going to populate 2 in this cell so 2 here is the value of the sub problem a b and a h p and 1 over here is the value of the sub problem a and a h b g so we are playing by the rules that we discussed moments ago moving to this cell over here we have d as the last character of the string 2 and b as the last character of string 1 till this sub problem so b and d don't match so in this case we are going to take the maximum between this two and this one again we are going to do two which we will populate here moving to the next cell here b and c don't match so in this case again it will be the maximum of two and one so that is going to give me two so we have finished filling up this row now we move to the last row here the sub problem is a b c and a so clearly we know that we are going to populate one in this cell but how the algorithm is going to know it is going to find the maximum between the value of this cell and this cell so between one and zero what is the maximum one so the algorithm is going to populate one in this cell let's move to this cell here c doesn't match h 
So in this case, the maximum of 1 and 1 will be calculated. The maximum is going to come out as 1 because both the values are same. Moving to this cell, C doesn't match with B. So what is going to happen? Again, the maximum between this value and this value will be taken out between 2 and 1, which is maximum 2 again. Now moving to this cell, we have C and G as the last characters. They don't match. So it will be the maximum of 2 and this 2. What is the maximum between 2 and 2? They both are same. So I will populate 2 in this cell. Moving to this cell, we have C and D as the last characters, which again don't match. So let me straight away populate 2 in this cell. Now we have come to the last cell. Here we have C as the last character from string 1 and C indeed is the last character of a string 2. This is the final subproblem. They both match. So in this case, what we are going to do? We are going to go one cell back diagonally and add 1 to the value stored over here. So 2 plus 1 is going to give us 3 and hence we are going to place 3 in this cell. Now we have calculated the value of our last cell. What we are seeking whether the final value which is 3 is equal to the length of the smaller string that is string 1 for which we are finding whether it is a subsequence of the bigger string or not. So 3 over here matches the length of string 1. Hence, the algorithm is going to tell ABC over here is a subsequence of AHB GDC. With this, we have come to the end of this video. You will find the GitHub link to the Java solution of this problem is subsequence in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you learned from this video. Like it, share it, tell people about it. I look so much forward to help you with programming and algorithms. Thank you and take very good care of yourself.